perilionate instability and dislocation. Here is the arrangement of the scaphoid, leonate, triquitrum, and cavitate. These carpal bones are connected with ligaments. This injury can be missed on initial presentation about 25% of the time. The injury can be perileonate dislocation or leonate dislocation. What are the types of perileonate injuries? It can be transradial styloid perileonate, transscaphoid perileonate, or perileonate. In the perileonate dislocation, the injury can go through the styloid process and is called chauffeur fracture. Or it can go through the scaphoid and it's called transscaphoid perileonate. The injury can also be purely ligamentous and that is called a smaller arc. The injury can go through the larger arc with ligaments disruption and bony injuries. The main field classification shows the stages of the perileonate instability. Stage 1, injury to the scapholeonate ligament. Stage 2, injury to the cabetoleonate joint. Stage 3, injury to the leonotraquitral ligament and joint. Stage 4, occurs due to failure of the dorsal radiocarbal ligament. The leonate will rotate and dislocate, usually into the carpal tunnel, and that will give us the spilled teacup sign. In the perileonate fracture dislocation, the leonate bone will remain in the leonate fossa, and the rest of the carpal bones will dislocate in relation to the leonate. In leonate dislocation, the leonate is dislocated in a volar direction. The leonate no longer has a normal radioleonate articulation. The leonate dislocation will have a spilled teacup appearance. You will see a dislocation of the leonate from the leonate fossa, and the remainder of the carpus are collinear with the radius. This is how the perileonate injury occurs in stages, and it may end by the final stage of leonate dislocation. And when the leonate dislocates volarly, it may give an acute carpal tunnel syndrome. There might be a compression of the median nerve by the leonate. The patient will complain of numbness on the volar aspect of the radial three digits. How do you know you have a perileonate or leonate dislocation? You look at certain lines. You look at Gilula lines. You look at Terry Thomas sign, which is the gap between the scaphoid and the leonate. You look at the collinearity of the radius, the lunate, and the cavitate. Take your time and trace the small bones of the carbus and its relationship to each other and to the radius. You check if the lunate looks like a piece of a pie, triangular in shape. That means subluxed or dislocated. When the scaphoid goes volarly, it will give the ring sign due to palmar flexion of the scaphoid. Look at DZ angle and VZ angle. The scaphoid have a tendency to volar or palmar flex. The traquitrum have a tendency to dorsiflex. If the relationship with the leonate is severed from one bone, the leonate will go with the other bone. 
if the lunate scaphoid relationship is severed because the scaphoid lunate ligament is injured, then the lunate will follow the triquitrum and the lunate will be dorsiflexed. That is called DZ. The lunate definitely will go with who supports it. How do you know the patient have DZ? DZ means dorsal intercalated segment instability. The scaphoid and the lunate bones turn in the opposite direction. The scaphoid tends to be going volally. The lunate will go dorsal, DZ. If the lunotriquitral ligament is affected, then the lunate will have a tendency to go with the scaphoid. So the lunate will be volar flexed or parmal flexed. That's called VZ. Here is the arrangement of the normal angle, the VZ angle, and the VZ angle. This is how you measure the angle. The normal angle is less than 60 degrees. The scaphoid lunate angle is usually about 47 degrees. Any angle that's greater than 60 degrees is considered to be abnormal, and that happened because of the palmar flexion of the scaphoid. That means there is a scaphoid lunate dissociation. It is easy. The treatment is urgent closed reduction to relieve the median nerve from compression, followed by an elective repair through dorsal approach or a combined dorsal and volar approach. Carpal tunnel release should be done for cases with acute carpal tunnel syndrome that does not improve by closed reduction. In general, the treatment of lunate dislocation is usually closed reduction and splinting, followed by open reduction and ligaments repair and fixation of the carpal bones with possible carpal tunnel release. This is done for all acute injuries. Acute injuries are considered to be less than eight weeks from the time of the injury. Injury that is chronic and more than eight weeks is not unusual and may result from a missed diagnosis. In this case of chronic injury, you will do proximal row carpectomy. In proximal row carpectomy, you will excise the scaphoid, the leonate, and the triquitrum and you will try to preserve the radio scaphocapitate ligament to avoid the ulnar drift of the carpus. Thank you very much. I hope that was helpful.